Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins and for today I am going to be your Linode Developer Advocate. What we're going to be doing in this video is setting up the framework to be able to host our very own Steam game servers and we are going to be using this with a little tool called Steam CMD. Now to get this running properly, there's going to be a good amount of dependencies that we're gonna to need to install as well as some work in IP tables. So let's jump on in. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is creating our very own instance of Linode. Now, if you don't already have an account over at Linode, you could go ahead and use the link in the description to get a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and get started. Now to do this, you just want to go ahead and select new Linode. And then from there, we're gonna go with the latest version of Ubuntu LTS. And then for region, we could go ahead and pick a server that's either closest to us or closest to our target audience. Now below that is going to be the plan. Now the, just the basic setup process that we're doing today, you could go ahead and do on the cheapest plan that is the Nanode one gigabyte plan, but you may need to upgrade depending on your system requirements for the game servers that you intend on hosting. For example, in this case, I went ahead and selected the eight gigabyte plan because later on, potentially in a future video, I'm gonna be setting up an Arc server with Steam CMD. Next, we're gonna to want to create a strong and secure root password, and then from there, we could go ahead and create our Linode. Now, it's here that I'm gonna note that creating a super strong and secure password isn't always good enough. Uh, in this video, I'm not going to get into SSH keys, but down below, I will link to some awesome resources that will help you better secure your server. So while your Linode is booting up and getting created, what you could do if you want to is go to your dashboard and open up the Lish console. This will allow you to see what it's doing, and when you are greeted with a login prompt, you know that your Linode is ready. So when this is the case, I'm going to go ahead and close that out, and I'm actually going to log into this via SSH through a local terminal, so that way it just makes it a lot easier to copy and paste commands in the future. And for this, I'm actually going to be using Tilix, and this is a fantastic terminal emulator for Linux, but if you're on any other systems such as Windows, you can just go ahead and use whatever terminal client is installed by default. Now to actually SSH in, we're simply gonna go back to our Linode dashboard and copy and paste that SSH. This is basically just SSH root at whatever your Linode's IP address is. So go ahead and paste that into your terminal and when you hit enter, you're going to go ahead and accept that the server is safe by typing in yes and then go ahead and input the root password that you created earlier. And now that we are logged into our server, we can begin the standard update process. And to do this, since you're root, you don't have to type sudo yet. You can just type an apt update and and app upgrade. And that will go ahead and update your server to the latest package of the native repositories. Now doing everything as a root user isn't always the best idea. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is create a new sudo user. So for this guide, we're gonna create the user Steam. And to do this, we're just gonna type in add user space Steam. And then when you run the add user command, it's gonna ask you to create a password for that user. Make sure again, just like your root password, this is strong and secure. Then it is gonna ask you to fill out some information about yourself. Now this is completely optional. You do not need to do this, at least for our use case. So you can just go ahead and hit enter to skip the prompts and then select Y when it asks you if everything is correct to continue. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and give that user some pseudo privileges. And to do this, all we need to do is a user mod command. That's a user mod dash lowercase a capital G pseudo and then the username that you went with. For our case, it's going to be Steam. Now that we have that new user created, we're gonna go ahead and switch to that user just by typing in su steam or whatever the username is and then going to the home directory for that user. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and configure our firewall using the pre-installed IP tables. What we're gonna be doing is creating some convenient files within our home directory so then we can easily push the changes with a restore command. So for the first file, all you need to do is type in nano, that's the text editor we're gonna use, and then v4. And what we're gonna be doing is copying over the contents from the install Steam CMD documentation over on the node. And it is here that I'm going to note when you get to the point that you're gonna be installing actual game servers, you may need to open up additional ports. And these two files is one of the many ways that you can go ahead and do that. So once you've copied and pasted over the contents into the file, what you could do is press Control O to save the file and then Control X to go ahead and exit Nano. Now go ahead and repeat this step with the V6 file. Now before we do anything with these files, what we're gonna to need to do is install the IP tables persistent package. What this is going to do is make it really easy to apply these firewall settings 
and reapply them after your server reboots for whatever reason you may need to reboot your server. So to install this, just type in sudo apt install ip tables dash persistent. And when you do install this, a prompt will display asking you if you'd like to save your current IPv4 rules. Go ahead and select yes for both the v4 and v6 prompts as we're about to overwrite some of these files anyways. Now what we're gonna do is run the IP tables restore commands to import the rule sets into the firewall and activate them. And to do this, you're just gonna type in sudo IP tables dash restore, then the lesser than symbol, and then point it to that v4 file we created. And then for the v6 file, the only difference is, is you type IP six tables dash restore and then point it to the proper file. And now what we're going to do is reconfigure our firewall with the new resets with the IP tables persistent package that we just installed. And to do this, what you're going to want to do is type sudo dpkg dash reconfigure IP tables dash persistent. And just like before, we're going to go ahead and get a prompt asking us if we'd like to save these rules, go ahead and select yes for both v4 and v6. And now what we can do is go ahead and check to make sure those rules are now active. You can do this by typing sudo IP tables dash lowercase v capital L. And here you can see if I go ahead and zoom out, we have all of the rules now active that Steam is going to need to properly communicate with the outside world. Now, what we just did with IP tables is one of the many ways that you could go ahead and go about this. What I would recommend is you go ahead and go down below and read the documentation on controlling your network traffic with IP tables. It is a wonderful resource and it will go over more commands and some other things you could go ahead and do with it. So now everything is ready to go ahead and begin setting up Steam CMD. Now we're gonna need a lot more prerequisites and in this case, it's gonna be a lot of system or a lot of the 32-bit libraries that Steam CMD is gonna be needing to run properly. But before that, we're gonna need to add the multiverse repository to pull a lot of these packages. So go ahead and type in sudo add apt repository and multiverse. Now, after you've added this new repository, go ahead and do sudo dpkg add architecture i368, and this will add the availability to get these 32-bit libraries on our system. And then once you've added both the multiverse repository and this new architecture, we're gonna want to go ahead and update our system so that way we'll be able to install these new libraries. And now let's go ahead and grab a lot of these 32-bit libraries that we're gonna be needing. And to do this, let's go ahead and type in sudo apt install and then this list of libraries that you see on the screen now. And again, I will note that a lot of the commands and everything that I'm talking about in this guide, you could go ahead, go to the links down below and easily copy and paste a lot of these. Now, recently an issue that a lot of people have been getting involves a failed to init SDL priority manager error. And to prevent this, we're gonna go ahead and need to install an additional 32-bit library, specifically the SDL libraries. So go ahead and install that and accept all the packages that it tries to install with it. And now we're finally here. We could go ahead and install the Steam CMD package. And I'm gonna go ahead and add screen to this command just to make sure it is installed as it is a prerequisite. Now, when we install this, we're gonna see a license agreement for Steam. Make sure you go ahead and read through this and to go ahead and select okay, what you need to do is hit tab and then hit enter. And then on the next page, select I agree if you do. And now what we're gonna do is create a sim link to the Steam CMD executable file in a convenient place. So basically we're gonna make a shortcut in our home directory. So first make sure you are in your home directory and then type ln s and then point this to the Steam CMD executable, which is in user games and Steam CMD. And then we could go ahead and create our shortcut and name it Steam CMD. And then we could do a quick ls just to make sure it's in there. And now to actually run Steam CMD, all we need to do in the proper directory is type in Steam CMD. And then this will begin the update process within Steam. And once the update is complete, you will be in your Steam console. Now with Steam, you can log in as anonymous or with your actual Steam account, but anonymous is generally my go-to as you can still download, update, and run game servers with ease. And at this point, you're basically all done. You now have Steam CMD running on your very own instance of Linode. But before we go, I'm gonna give you one last tip. If you go around looking for server installation guides, you're gonna notice a lot of them are kind of out of date. And one common thing you'll run into is when installing a game server, it's gonna ask you to log in and then go ahead and set a forced install directory for whatever games you're trying to install. And if we do this, as we can see, we get an error. 
And simply put, you just need to do the force install before you log in instead of after. It's just one little thing that you're probably gonna run into. So that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in trying this out for yourself, you go ahead, go down to the description, use the link to get that $100 60 day credit, and do make sure you are subscribed to this channel because we'll have some more gaming specific tutorials coming up in regards to Steam CMD. And just in general, if you're interested in Linux servers or cloud hosting in general, this is a great channel. So make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell so you do not miss any future uploads. Uh, with all that, I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.